Welcome back. Can you remember back to one of the first videos in this course? I listed various types of software and gave you examples of each type. One of those examples was Google Chrome. Can you remember what category that fell into? Chrome is a web browser. It's one of the most popular browsers and it's completely free. If you haven't used it yet, I highly recommend giving it a try. And that's what we're going to do now. Windows 10 comes installed with a couple of browsers already and we'll need one of these to download a copy of Chrome. Double click the E icon on the desktop or click once on the E icon in the taskbar. Once Edge loads, it displays a web page. There's a good chance you'll be taken to a different page than me. So don't be surprised if your screen looks a little different here. Click in the address bar at the top of the window and type in www.google.com. Once completed, hit the enter key on the keyboard. Google is a search engine which allows us to find information and pages on the internet. More on this in module two of the ECDL. For now, just know that this is what we're going to use to find Chrome. Click in the search box and type in Google Chrome and hit the enter key again. Click on the first link that says Google Chrome download Chrome today. Now click download Chrome. This will now offer you the installation file. At the bottom of the window, Edge is asking what you want to do with this file. We can run or save it, or we can cancel and back out the installation. The easiest option to select here is run. This will start the installation process for us. After a few seconds, we have a security box or user account control to be precise. This is Windows checking with us that we want to install a new piece of software. It's not uncommon for malicious software to try and install programs that we haven't asked for. So if you see this box appear when you're not expecting it, be wary of clicking yes without checking where it's come from. Once we click yes, the installation process starts. There isn't much to do here except sit back and watch. You could do other stuff on your computer while this is running through, but I find it best just to leave the computer to complete the installation before trying to use it. Once complete, Google Chrome opens. In this case, it's telling me how to set it as a default web browser. Now that we have Chrome installed, let's use it to install another piece of software. In this case, LibreOffice. Again, if you recall from one of the earlier videos, LibreOffice is a fully featured office suite containing word processor, spreadsheet, and database applications. With Chrome, we can search directly from the address bar. So click in the address bar at the top and type LibreOffice. Now hit the Enter key. Click again on the first search result, Home, LibreOffice, Free, Office Suite. This has taken us to the home page. Click on Download at the top and then click on Download LibreOffice. The most recent version will be listed at the top. We need to select a version to download. To double check which version is correct for you, let's remind ourselves what version of Windows we are using specifically whether it's 32 or 64 bit. Let's go into Windows settings. So from the start menu, click on the cog. Click on system. Now scroll down to the bottom of the list on the left and click about. On the right, we can see under system type that this version of Windows is 64 bit. Now that we know this, close the system settings window. Click on operating system drop down and click Windows x86 underscore 64. If system settings had told us that it was 32-bit operating system that we we're using, I would need to select Windows x86 here. With that selected, click download. At the bottom of the Chrome window, after a few seconds, we can see a file downloading. Depending on the speed of your internet connection, it might take a while for this to finish. You can see at the bottom, it has a counter going up and a timer running down to show you the progress of the download. You should also see a blue outline rotating around the icon to indicate that the file download is in progress. Once completed, we can click on the file name to open the file. In this case, it will run the installation wizard. There are a few steps to go through on the wizard to start the installation. To begin, click Next. Now we have the choice of typical or custom installation. Most of the time, typical will be fine. 
Custom can be used to specify exactly which features to install. Typical will give you a general set of features. We'll stick with typical, so click next. Now we have a couple of checkboxes. Leaving the first checked will add shortcuts to the desktop. I'll leave this checked because it can make it easy to find the program once it's installed. Checking the second box will load LibreOffice every time you start the computer. This will mean that when you first start and sign into the computer, you'll have LibreOffice loaded, ready to use. That's great if it's the main thing that you use on the computer, but slightly annoying if it's not. I'll leave this unchecked and click Install. It's mostly sitting back and wait time again. I may get more user account control boxes appear as LibreOffice makes a few changes to my computer. This is all part of the installation process, so click yes to accept. Once the installation has completed, click finish. Just to show you what's happened, let me close Chrome and Edge on the desktop. We can see shortcuts to Chrome and LibreOffice. Double click the icon to run the program. We can also find it in the start menu. Click the start button and because it's the last program we installed it's listed at the top under recently added or we can scroll down to L. Click on LibreOffice we can see the individual applications that make up the full suite including Writer for word processing, Calc for creating spreadsheets and Base is the database program. Microsoft Office is another suite of Office applications and it's one that some of the rest of this course is based on. So let's have a look at how to install it. Office is a paid application. There are a few versions available, each step up in price offering slightly more functionality and applications. The basic home package will suffice for most people. Here I'm logged into the Office 365 website. This is where you can access some of the online features as well as the online or browser based versions of the program. The option we want though is to install Office in the top right. On the next page, we need to select Install Office again and finally click Install. The installation file begins to download. Once it's downloaded, it won't take very long. The main part of the program is downloaded during the installation. Click on the file in the bottom of the Chrome to run the installation program. Again, Windows warns us that we are about to install a program. Click Yes to confirm and the installation begins. Again, there isn't much to do at this point. Maybe go and make a cup of tea while you're waiting for the installation to finish. Once the installation has finished, click Close. The Office program can now be found on the Start menu, under Recently Added and also alphabetically in the main list of applications. Now that we have Microsoft Office installed, we may decide that we no longer need LibreOffice. This means that we need to uninstall it. This can be done either from the System Settings or Control Panel. Let's start with the Control Panel. So from the Start menu, select Windows System, and then Control Panel. Then click on Uninstall a Program. We now see a list of programs installed on the computer. To see a similar list from Windows Settings, click on Apps from the front page. You notice there is a bit of difference between the two lists. This is because Windows System displays a lot of programs built into Windows. These can't be uninstalled, but you can change some advanced settings for them. Find LibreOffice in the list, and click on it once. We now have two options. The first is to modify in system settings. In control panel, the option equivalent is change. These options allow you to modify the installation, normally installing or removing additional features. To remove the program, click uninstall and yes to confirm. During the uninstall process, we see another user access control message. Click yes to confirm. After some time, LibreOffice has been removed from the list 
and removed entirely from the computer. Occasionally, a program will run into a problem and appear to freeze or crash. It's best to give it a few moments to see if it can recover itself. If it doesn't, there are a few ways we can force the program to close. The first is just to click the cross in the top right corner, just as we would normally do to close the program. This will sometimes be enough. The next option is to bring the mouse pointer down to the program's icon on the taskbar. As you hover over the icon, a pop-up will appear representing the program. Bring the mouse up over this and you'll find a cross appear in the top right. Click on this cross. If that doesn't work, click the right mouse button while the pointer is on an empty space on the taskbar. Then click on Task Manager. This shows a list of programs that are running. To close one of them, click it and then click the End Process button. This should finally close the program. The final way to find and install applications is using the Windows Store. This is very much like the App Store on the iPhone or the Play Store on Android phones. Open it from the Start menu, you'll find it listed as Microsoft Store. Once loaded, we can find a program to install. Top Apps will be a good place to start. The Microsoft Store has both paid and free apps. I'll switch the list to just look at free apps. In the list we can find one called VLC. As this is a free program, we just need to click Get. The Windows Store will ask us to sign in with a Microsoft account. If we do that, then we can load this software onto any computer that we use. If this was a paid app, then you probably want to sign in to keep track of your purchases. However, as I'm just showing you how to install this, I'll click No Thanks. The installation will then run through. Once complete, you will have the option to launch the new program from the App Store. You'll also have a new shortcut added to the Start menu. It's possible to take a picture of the screen or desktop. This can be useful, for example, there might be an error message displayed that you want to show an IT professional. To do this, all you need to do is find the print screen key on the keyboard. You can normally find it in the cluster of keys up from the arrow keys. On a laptop, it can be anywhere. Start by looking in the top right or bottom right areas. It will normally be labeled PRTSCR or similar. Once you press this button, not much will happen, but we can now paste the picture. More on what pasting is in a later lecture. Let's open Paint, so Start Menu, Windows Accessories, then Paint. Now click the button in the top left, Paste. We can now save the picture. Click File at the top, then click Save. Specify a location, I'll put it in my Pictures folder. I'll change the name, my screenshot, will do. Then click Save. It's possible to just take a picture of the active window as well. With the window that you want to take a picture of in the foreground, hold down the ALT key. Normally this is found just to the left of the spacebar. While holding down the ALT key, tap the print screen key and release the ALT key. Now we'll open Paint again and click the Paste button. This time we can see that it's just taken a picture of the active window. I can now save this in the same way as before. Click the File menu, then Save. Select a location and give it a file name. Finally, click the Save button. There is another tool that is part of Windows that you can use to grab a screenshot. It can be a little more flexible as you can just grab part of a window. The tool is called Snip and Sketch. You can find it in the Start menu. To start grabbing all or part of the screen, click the New button. Don't be alarmed that it now looks like you're looking at the screen through a fog but notice that the mouse pointer has now turned into a cross. This allows me to select the area of the screen that I want to capture. Click and hold the mouse button on part of the screen. With the mouse button still held down, move the mouse. You'll see a rectangle appear. This is the area that the Snip and Sketch tool is going to grab, so keep moving the mouse until the desired area is selected. Then release the mouse button. The area that you highlighted will be displayed in the Snip and Sketch tool. 
It can take a bit of practice to get the area that you want captured. If it's not quite right, click the New button again and have another go. Once you're happy with your selection, there are a couple of tools that might be of use. At the top, there is a pen and a highlighter. With the pen selected, I can draw all over the screenshot. With the highlighter, allows me to highlight the screenshot. If you make a mistake, then here is an eraser. This won't affect the screenshot, just the annotation that you've made with the previous tools. Once you want to save the screenshot, click on the Save icon, select a location, give it a file name and click Save. In this lecture, we have looked at installing software. This included downloading software from a web page and installing it, as well as using the Windows Store to find and install applications. I showed you how to use the Windows System Settings and Control Panel to remove or uninstall programs. I showed you what to do when a program misbehaves, using Task Manager to find and force the program to close. We finished by looking at how to take a screenshot and using the print screen key on the keyboard and the snipping tool. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.